Hello everyone, and welcome back to our DSP using MATLAB tutorial series. In today's video, we'll be diving into the topic of linear and circular convolution of discrete signals using MATLAB. Convolution is an essential operation in digital signal processing, and understanding how to perform linear convolution in MATLAB can be extremely useful. Before starting the video, we would like to share this. We've noticed that many of you are watching our content without subscribing to our channel. We want to remind you that subscribing to our channel not only helps us, it encourages us to keep bringing you more exciting and informative videos. So do subscribe to our channel. Without any delay, let's get started. First, we will see about discrete time convolution. Let's say we have a system whose input is xn and output is yn. The transfer function of the system is hn. We get the output by the convolution of input and impulse response of the system. Let's look into the expression. To get the output, first we change the variable to k. Then do time reversal operation on hk. Then shifting the h of minus k by n, we will get h of n minus k. To get the value at n, we multiply both of these signals. And to get the whole sequence, we do for all the points on the axis. Let's see one example, how we can do it with graphical method. To begin, let's define two discrete signals that we want to convol. We'll call them x and h. On scale, they will be like this. As we said earlier, first we change the axis to k. Then we inverse the h and then shift it. Now the points will change as shown. Now let's find yn. Take n equals minus 1. In this case there is no overlapping points. So result will be 0. So for all values of n less than minus 1, will be 0. Now check for the case n equals 0. Then h will be shifted. We can see there is one overlapping point at 0. We multiply them to get the result at n equals 0. For n equals 1, we have two overlapping points. We multiply them and add them to get the result at n equals 1. In this way we do for all the remaining points. For n greater than 4, again there will be no overlapping of points, so no need to compute after that. Finally for the three input sequence of 1s and impulse response of 1, 2 and 3. We get the output as shown below. Let's see how to do it in MATLAB. To begin, let's define two discrete signals that we want to convolve. We'll call them x and h. Here xn and hn represent the time points of the signals x and h respectively. Create a variable to store the maximum length the output can be. Now we pad zeros at the end of the x and h to make them same length so they can be multiplied. Now create y with all zeros. In the first loop we run over all the points, and the second loop is used for the hn minus k. We multiply them and accumulate them. Finally we plot them using stem function. Compare the results here with the previous calculation we've done. Both are same. Instead of writing this loops, we can use the built-in MATLAB function con to get the result. You can see both the results are same, but there are zeros padded. Let's declare the variables again and run it. Now we get the same result. You know that convolution in time domain is multiplication in frequency domain. So we will do in that way also. First declare the variables. Modify the matrices to make them of equal length. Now using FFT command, we convert both the input and impulse response into frequency domain. We simply multiply them to get the frequency domain result of yn. Using IFFT command, we convert it back to time domain. Create the time points for graphs. Plot them using stem command. We get the same output as previous results. Let's know about circular convolution and how to do it manually. The representation of circular convolution is different. Take the same examples. We write the matrix H in the following way. First column is same as the H. Then we circular shift the first column and write them in next column. Then we do the same for the following columns. Then we multiply it with X. By doing matrix multiplication, we get the results. Note that, instead of rearranging H you can do it with X also. But do only one. Let's see how to get the result in MATLAB. Give the same inputs which we used before. 
Using CCON function we get the circular convolution of the inputs. An additional input should be given, which is the length of the output we want to get. Run the code to get the output. Let's change the input and see the result. Check whether this result is same as we did by matrix method and comment your results. Let's also see how to get circular convolution using FFT command. There is no need to pad zeros at the end. That is the difference between circular and linear convolution. If we add zeros we get linear convolution output, without zeros we get circular convolution. We get this error because the inputs to FFT functions should be of same length. Now we get the result. Now with all the methods you learned till now, you can create a GUI like this to get the plots in the same window. Give the input values. The time points will be automatically created. Select one type of convolution method to get the plots. Now that you have a basic understanding of linear convolution in MATLAB, feel free to explore more complex examples and apply convolution to different types of signals. That's all for today's tutorial on linear convolution of discrete signals in MATLAB. I hope you found this video helpful in understanding the concept and its implementation in MATLAB. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more MATLAB tutorials. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.